The human body is undeniably amazing in what it's capable of when it's pushed to extreme limits, while very few on the planet have ever tested to see what those limitations truly are. A few of those men and women were under dangerous conditions that were sometimes out of their control. The truth is, no one really knows if they'll ever be faced with a survival situation, whether they get lost while hiking out in the woods, or their car becomes stranded on a desert highway. Without the proper supplies and being exposed to certain elements, it's only a matter of time before your body has had enough. Do you know how long you could survive without water, food, or shelter? And what's considered to be too hot or too cold for a person? Or how long could you go without oxygen and what elevation is simply too much for your body to handle? Keep watching to find out the answers to these questions and look out for the rule of threes. Human beings have certain basic needs. We must have food, water, air, and shelter to survive. If any one of these basic needs is not met, then humans cannot survive. Before past explorers set off to find new lands and conquer new worlds, they had to make sure their basic needs were met. Supplies of food and water were brought on the journey or were gathered along the way. Shelter, such as a tent, was either carried or built to protect explorers from the weather or other dangers. Basic human needs have not changed much since the 17th century. We continue to explore to better understand our own world and to address the modern challenges that face societies in general. Beyond the boundaries of Earth, 21st century explorers will face a unique set of challenges as they return to the Moon, travel to Mars, and scout the far reaches of the solar system. We all hear epic accounts of people surviving bullets to the brain, 10-story free falls, or months stranded at sea. Take the case of Vesna Volovic, for example. She currently holds the Guinness World Record for the longest survived fall after the plane she was working on exploded mid-flight sending her on a 30,000-foot fall to the ground where she sustained serious injuries but ultimately survived. This is quite a contrast from the 650,000 estimated global deaths from falling each year, most of which happen at heights under 20 feet. There seems to be two main factors when it comes to surviving an accident of some kind or an environmental hazard, and these are luck and personal resilience. There are people who have been shot over a dozen times in places that should kill them, but managed to survive, compared with the story about a man in the US who was shot in the toe with an air rifle only for the wound to cause a blood clot which traveled to his brain and killed him. This is a case of luck that is out of anyone's control, but personal resilience is more controllable and plays a big part in how well someone survives. Many of the boundaries within which a typical human can survive have been fully established. The well-known rule of threes dictates how long we can forego air, water, and food, which is roughly three minutes, three days, and three weeks, respectively. Other limits are more speculative, because people have seldom, if ever, tested them. Let's take a look at some of those other limits of human survival. Normal body temperature ranges from 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius or 97.7 to 99.5 Fahrenheit, with the average being somewhere in the middle. A difference of only a single degree could cause you to experience an intense fever and feel very hot, or losing as little as 2 degrees can cause hypothermia to set in. The problem is that there are no standard numbers to determine how quickly someone will get cold and how long they can hold on for at low temperatures. This is where the personal resilience factor plays its part, which makes a much bigger difference than you'd think. A person native to a cold country would be able to stay alive longer than someone from a hot country if they both found themselves floating in cold waters, but ultimately both would eventually die. The average human will die from the cold when their body temperature reaches 21 degrees Celsius, but they would be incapable of doing anything long before it hits this temperature, with the average passing out temperature being around 28 degrees Celsius. Anyone who survived an Australian summer knows that stepping outside the comfort of the air-conditioned house can feel like stepping into a sauna, but how hot is too hot for our bodies to cope with? If you thought that Australia was one of the hottest countries, you wouldn't be entirely wrong. In January 2018, the western Sydney suburb of Penrith peaked at a steamy 47.3 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest place in the world at the time. However, Death Valley in California holds the record of highest temperature ever measured on Earth, hitting a top of 56.7 degrees Celsius in 1913. 
1958 report by NASA explained that our bodies are made to live in environments that are between 4 and 35 degrees Celsius. However, if humidity is lower than 50%, we can withstand slightly hotter temperatures. The higher the humidity, the hotter it feels because it makes it harder for us to sweat and keep ourselves cool. Once your body is exposed to so much heat, it can't regulate itself anymore. It's called hypothermia. One of the first stages of hypothermia is heat exhaustion, so you might feel weak, dizzy, nauseous, fatigued, suffer headaches, and become thirsty. Most humans will suffer hypothermia after 10 minutes in extremely humid 60 degrees Celsius heat. If the internal body temperature reached 43 degrees Celsius, death would occur. There have been people who have survived an internal temperature as high as 46 degrees Celsius, but reaching this temperature would almost certainly cause other effects like convulsions, shock, respiratory failure, and even brain damage. So how long can a person survive without food? The general estimate is a person can survive without food for about three weeks, but this can vary greatly depending on a range of factors. If someone is in very good shape and they spend all their time just sitting there not using up much energy, then it would be possible to survive for 30 days or more, with out-of-shape people sometimes lasting for as little as two weeks. The single biggest factor is what a person's body is used to eating, as a complete lack of food would be a greater shock to the system than for someone with a smaller diet. After 24 hours with no food, you would start to experience bouts of nausea, which will slowly get worse. And after 48 hours, you'll be completely drained of energy and have great difficulty moving around. For the last third of the time frame before you starve to death, you would be so weak that walking would be close to impossible. And the lack of food may cause other painful symptoms like intense cramps and muscle pains. The average time for a person to survive without water is about 70 to 80 hours. But this can vary greatly from person to person. Thirst affects someone's ability to continue much worse than a lack of food does. And even though the average time is about three days, you would be in no state to do anything long before the point that you actually die. After 24 hours with no water, your kidneys would begin to struggle and intense headaches would set in. After 48 hours, your body would begin to rapidly degrade and it would be close to impossible to eat anything at this point. Every single organ in the human body relies on blood to feed it oxygen. And with a lack of water, the blood would begin to thicken and circulation would slow to the point that organs would begin to suffocate and shut down. Before people die of thirst, they usually go blind due to lack of moisture available in the body to feed the eyes. A good example of how a lack of water affects the body would be the story of Aaron Ralston, who cut off his own arm after more than four days with only a tiny amount of water. His blood had thickened so much that he barely bled from a severed arm and was even able to walk a few miles without bleeding to death. If you watched illusionist David Blaine sail via balloons into the lofty heights of commercial airspace, you might recall that he once held his breath for more than 17 minutes. But that's not the limit. Astonishingly, the Guinness World Record holder, Alex Segura Vendrell from Spain, was able to hold his breath for an impressive 24 minutes and 3 seconds. For most people, it's safe to hold your breath for a minute or two. Doing so for too much longer can decrease oxygen flow to the brain, causing fainting, seizures, and brain damage. In the heart, a lack of oxygen can cause abnormalities of rhythm and affect the plumbing action of the heart. It can also damage your kidneys and liver. The longest someone has ever survived without sleep is 264 hours, a record set by a high school student in the US named Randy Gardner in 1964. By the end of the experiment, he was completely unresponsive and had no ability to do anything, including moving. After 24 hours of being awake, a person's ability to function is the same as after drinking several glasses of wine, and after 48 hours, someone's puzzle-solving skills will only be a fraction of their normal level. Because it's not ethical to see how long it would take for someone to die from a lack of sleep, there haven't been any official studies conducted. But claims from various places like prison camps and stories of torture put the time length of how long it would take from a person to die of sleep deprivation at between 8 and 13 days. How long have you managed to go without food or water? Can you remember what the rule of threes is? And please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.